there are three things that I need to take in mind or take into account when I'm reading the results from the power calculator to make sure that I understand what I'm doing for ethanol. The first thing is, if I'm shooting for, say, 350 horsepower on my buildup for gasoline, then I'm going to input 350 as my target power level into the calculator. But if I'm shooting for 350 horsepower on ethanol, and I know that ethanol produces 11% more horsepower than gasoline, and I know that the power calculator was designed for gasoline in its current version, then I don't need to tell the power calculator that I'm shooting for 350 horsepower, but rather I'm going to divide my target power level by 1.11, or reduce it by 11%, and that's the number that I'm going to put into the power calculator. Second thing that's different when using the power calculator for ethanol is that the power calculator gives you a maximum recommended compression ratio, static compression ratio, to match your boost level. That compression ratio, when you're running ethanol, can be higher than what the power than what the power calculator recommends by two and a half compression points because E85 has 10 points higher octane level. The third thing to notice here is that the power calculator thinks you're using gasoline. So if you're shooting for 400 horsepower on gasoline, the fuel injectors, the fuel pump, and the fuel lines recommended by the power calculator will not be enough for ethanol because we know ethanol requires about 50% more fuel flow for the same amount of air. And so when I want to use the power calculator, to calculate my fuel supply requirements, such as my injector, my pump, and my fuel lines, I need to tell it that I'm shooting for an inflated power target, which is about 50% higher than the actual power that I'm going to make. And I do that by multiplying my target power, such as 350 horsepower, by 1.48 or by 1.5, and that's the number that I'm going to put into the calculator when I'm looking to do my fuel calculations. Now, I'm going to talk about the advantage of using EA to a comparison where first I'm going to do the calculations for gasoline with a target of 350 horsepower, then I'm going to do the calculations for ethanol with different power targets depending on what I'm calculating, and I'll show you how the numbers are different. For the basic calculation for gasoline, I'm going to come in here and log into my power calculator. And I'm going to input an 1800cc engine with four cylinders, 8100 RPM redline, and dual intake and exhaust valves. The cylinder bore isn't really important for this example, so it doesn't matter what you put in here. Stock compression ratio is 11.5 to 1. Stock horsepower is 190 horsepower at 7600 RPMs at zero pounds of boost and I would like to make 350 horsepower using a single throttle body, single exhaust, and I do not plan, plan on running nitrous oxide. If I hit calculate, I get these numbers, 10 pounds of boost, and the rest of the numbers that I can show you over here in my presentation, 10 pounds of boost, compression ratio of 9.7 to 1, which means I need to lower my compression ratio if I'm using gasoline, injectors, 520 cc injectors, 126 liter per hour fuel pump, and a 6 an fuel feed line, and a 4 an fuel return line. Now to do this calculation for an ethanol conversion, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my calculator here, I'm going to type in my target power goal of 350, and I'm going to divide that by 1.11. The number I get is 315 horsepower. I'm going to take that reduced power goal, and I'm going to put that in here, in my inputs, and I'm going to redo my calculations with a target of 315 horsepower. The reason I do that is because I know that ethanol is going to produce more power for the same amount of air, 11% more power, so I can shoot for a more conservative buildup, and I'll still be able to reach my power goals. The numbers that come out of that calculation are pretty simple. We get 8 pounds of boost here. We get a maximum compression ratio of 10.2 to 1. But as I said before, since we're using ethanol, I can increase that by two and a half compression points. And so the actual maximum recommended compression ratio for ethanol at eight pounds of boost is 12.7 to one rather than 10.2 to one on gasoline and rather than 9.7 to one 
for the original gasoline buildup. And what this means, and this is higher than a factory compression ratio, this means I'm not going to have to take apart my engine, I'm not going to have to replace my pistons, and I'm not going to have to replace my, lower my compression ratio. And that's a great advantage for E85, is that it allows you to do these power buildups, reach the same power levels without the cost and complexity of doing a short block rebuild. Now when I'm going to calculate the requirements for the fuel portion of my ethanol conversion, I'm going to take my calculator here, I'm going to take 315 horsepower, which is my ethanol target, and I'm going to multiply that by 1.48, because I know I'm shooting for 48% more fuel volume, because that's what I'm going to need to reach the stoichiometry level of ethanol. I'm going to calculate that, and that will give me a target of 466 horsepower. I'm going to go back into the power calculator. I'm going to change my number here, my target power level, to 466. I'm going to click Calculate. And then I'm going to come down here and see all the figures that I get for fuel flow, which is 699 cc per minute injectors, 167 liter per hour fuel pump, and a uh, 6AN feed line, and sorry, an 8AN feed line, and a 6AN return line. I come back here and you can see I filled these out over here and so to do our E85 conversion we're going to need larger injectors, a larger pump and larger feed and return lines. Now that, now that I have this whole recipe worked out for you here you can go ahead and do it yourself using the existing version of the power calculator for an E85 setup or an E85 conversion. Um, I plan in the next version of the power calculator in the future to include a drop down list on the input screen right here. Sorry, my computer lags sometimes. On the input screen right here where you can choose your octane level, you can choose whether you want to use E85, which is 102 octane, or gasoline, which is 92 octane, and the power calculator will automatically adjust for those figures, but at the moment, in the current version, you're going to have to do this calculation three times to get these numbers. Um, the other reason I made this video and didn't wait till the new version came out is that I wanted to maybe educate, maybe introduce E85, maybe start a discussion about using a different octane fuel to do a slightly different setup where you can have an advantage with a high compression engine such as the 2ZZGE or such as a BMW M3 engine. Some of these um, very beautiful high compression engines that come from uh, the OEM such as the MG, as such as the M3 engine or such as a, an NSX uh, type R engine. Sometimes you want more power out of those engines because they're already well-built performance engines and supercharging them makes sense. But a lot of people are afraid to do that because of the cost and complexity of lowering the compression ratio on these exotic engines. With E85 you don't have to worry about that because you don't really have to lower the compression ratio. You can still reach the same power goals that you want at a lower boost level with great throttle response, with great compression with great timing advance and it gives you an option for working on a wider range of cars and doing a wider range of supercharger buildups and that's why I did that video so that you guys can get a feel or get an understanding for how we would do that. All right. Thanks again for listening to me and thanks for watching us on superchargerperformance.com.